Now a free software. Yes, free is in beer. Morning all. Welcome to another live stream. Um, I might just change the title while I'm at it. Because I forgot to do that before we started. How about the category games and demos? Yes, that should be art. Because, you know, we're all about the organisation. <laughs> Organised art is a blasphemy. Well, this is true. Although, would you consider a rock concert to be? Organised chaos. Hmm. The dog's already started to whine, so that plan didn't really work. Um... Morning, Matty. How are you? Oh, not too bad, Dan. How are you? <laughs> ah, I'm excellent, all things considered. We have and a... which things are you considering? So, well, well, there's a laundry list. So, let's start at the start. Interceptor now has five hours to go. Uh, 220 backers... $23,155. We really want to get to that 25000 mark to be able to get that next stretch goal unlocked. So, How many of those people are backing at $1 just for updates? Um, a, because a I'm saying send out an update saying, hey, by the way, it's about to close. Yeah, that was sent yesterday. No, send out another one. Uh. Todd, if you're listening, send out another one. Uh, now the cat's stirring the dog. That's great. Um, yes, I'm, I'm wrangling everything today. So if there's chaos, I apologise. Just adds to the authenticity of the art. <laughs> uh, um... So, now that's Interceptor, um, and domestic situations. Uh, we, we attempted to sell a spa during the week. We have a spa here that we no longer need, desire, want. Um, has been electrically disconnected since we put the workshop in. Uh, drained it of water earlier in the week and put it on marketplace and had a lot of interest and guys turned up and said yeah it's really good but I'm never going to get it off your property because there's no access big enough to actually get it out of the place and we're like mm, yeah good point so Joe was off at Bunnings this morning picking up a reciprocating saw and somebody's dropping off a six meter skip at some point this morning so I went from making 500 bucks to spending 900 bucks <laughs> and a day's worth of work to cut the damn thing up and get it out. Oh dear. Mm. Should have brought a tape measure. Yep. Should have brought a tape measure. I never even thought of the fact that you weren't going to be able to get it out past the house. I'm currently having that problem with some outdoor furniture that Andrea bought. <laughs> Well, getting it in or getting it out? Getting it out. Yeah, right. Oh, so she's bought it from somewhere else. Yeah. Mm. Well, this was stuff that had been picked up and delivered flat pack and assembled. Right. But she doesn't have tools. <laughs> mm-hmm. So the new stuff's come in and it's getting in the way. The old stuff's getting in the way of the new stuff. Right. And... We've tried to flog it, and uh, just can't seem to get it out of the buddy house. Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, old furniture. 
Um, so on top of that, the weather. The weather finally broke yesterday insofar as we had a series of thunderstorms come through and dump a bunch of rain and everything like that. And you think, wow, some relief from the heat and the humidity. Uh, no. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> well, normally when a thunderstorm comes through in Melbourne, you get the, the cooler, fresh air comes in behind it. And yeah, sure, everything's wet, but it's cool, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, no. It's mid- wow, that's weird. Mid- that is definitely not the lived Brisbane experience. No, uh, no. It's um, 77% humidity this morning. 20 20 degrees apparently according to that so same as inside same as outside so yeah it's not too bad but I've been running around after animals and everything like that so I'm sweating pretty hard um so yeah um what did we do last week we did elves Mm. so this is the one unit of elves I was working on. So you can see what they look like. They came out really good. I do like putting decals on shields. I think that just adds to it. I did did have a problem though because these guys have got I don't know if you know, if you can see that, but there's actually two different shapes of shield. <laughs> between uh, yeah. the two figures, so... Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I see yeah, that yeah, now. Yeah. Um, that was only amusing when it came to the second unit, and... It turns out that the decals I'd selected for the first unit were the only decals I had that actually fitted, and so I had to modify all the decals on the second unit to get them to fit. But there we go. So that's starting Saturday morning last week. Uh, um, Two units of Wood Elf Spearmen. Then... A unit of orc skirmishes because we're going to start play testing and I need skirmisher units so hopefully you can see what they look like I see that they're only two to uh, stand yeah that's the difference this b- difference between line infantry and skirmishes is the skirmishes are only two to a stand uh. They're supposed to be out in front with a skirmish line preventing other units from getting at your ranged units. Yeah. And then, because playtesting and I need more than one army, I did. I just finished these guys. These guys are literally 20 minutes old from the perspective of finished. Um, some human rangers in their camo smocks and headgear so they're nice and colourful despite being green and we've we've managed to get the green and gold in there again so themed in with the army very nice so yes the flocking is still falling off because they're so fresh and just some some indulgence I've been putting together a model kit so which one so it's a uh, yes it is a Tamiya Waterline Series E Class Destroyer hmm so been having fun with that that's not finished yet but it still needs a little bit of inking and a little bit of fettling um, but uh, I am um, discovered in quotes it, it's funny um, when you do a checkout 
from online sites. They have this thing where they go, hey, we notice you've got this in your cart. Maybe you would like to consider this and this and this. And normally I just completely ignore that because I know exactly what I want, because I know exactly why I'm there. Only this time something popped up and I went, ooh, that could be good. And it's this. It's called Plastic Magic. And I have never come across a better model glue. I've done one model with it, and I don't think I'll ever go back to the needle style glues. Ever. I've never heard of that one before. Mm. Yeah. And what's really interesting is, is that it isn't just a styrene cement. It'll do ABS as well. Mm. So I'm thinking, well... I do a lot of 3D printing in ABS and I rather suspect it will probably do PLA as well so um, some testing needs to be get done but uh, yeah I think you know a little bit of targeted advertising there actually worked what a shame what, that advertising actually worked on you for once? <laughs> well, <laughs> that I succumbed. Yeah, I've got flock everywhere, as you do. The, the, the static grass off the elves gets everywhere. Like, literally everywhere. Find it on your bath towel the following day. Ah, like um, beanbag beans. Oh, yeah. yeah. Only not quite so white. <laughs> Just, it's uh, 28 to 35 millimetre snow. Yeah. <laughs> that stuff um, does, does really well if you spray a, a petroleum product on it. So if you spray a um, like a turpentine onto it then it, it really does go like melty snow mm -hmm. um, so what are we doing today that's a very good question uh, finally get around to these guys so some noble knights Very nice looking horses. And I think we'll start with the horses. The dog's gone quiet again, so I'm going to make hay while the sun shines. Well, hey. Oh, spoke too soon. Jinxed it. Jinxed it. Uh, so, what are you painting? Oh, Dan. It's a sad, sad story. Mm. I haven't picked up paintbrush. Oh, God, I guess two weeks now. <gasps> yeah, I know. I know. I've been busy. Yes. I know you have. I've worked full days every day. Oh, well, I got Wednesday off, but only because they wouldn't let me come in. <laughs> right. I've worked full days Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and there's a, been a lot a lot uh, and I've just been absolutely knackered by the time I get home yeah and picking a paintbrush up when you're absolutely knackered doesn't work hmm so I've got tradies coming in this morning as I've mentioned mm. to you before um, and I may have to bugger off uh, at some point depending on where they want to start uh, they're putting in air conditioning about either three meters behind me first or somewhere upstairs right <laughs> uh, hopefully they go upstairs and then I won't have to bugger off but if I do have to bugger off I'm going to pick up a paintbrush well there's a silver lining to every cloud well yeah and I'll watch but I won't be able to chat mm. So they're putting some split systems in? Uh, sounds like it. Yeah. 
four split systems and installation for ten grand, I think. Yeah, that's not bad. No, it's not. Can't remember what we paid. We only put two systems in though, but the um system we put in the the living area was oversized. Um, because it's a big, big open plan room, so we wanted yeah. the cooling air to be able to get to all ends of the room. It's a, it's a really good thing actually, because where I'm sitting is sort of sandwiched in between that room and the bedroom. It, it isn't really. It's sort of off to one side. But what it means then is, is that there's no cooling in this room at all. Um, but I can have doors open at either end of it and have cool air coming from the bedroom in one end and cool air coming from the living room in the other end and it stays comfortable. Good deal. But um, I've got it closed off at the moment just because of noise. So. Yeah, I know how that goes. <laughs> Having to close off a room to keep the noise out. Yeah. You would have to do that for the... Absolutely right, for the podcast. For the podcast, yeah. So you won't know yourself. The house will be cool, it'll be dry, and your electricity bills will be eye-watering. Yeah, well, that was my point. I didn't want air conditioning. I'd... Buddy, two weeks ago, not even two weeks ago, had ceiling fans, extra ceiling fans put in through the house. There's mm. one sitting almost right above me. Right. And that works a treat. That's so, all it needs to do. So now you've got... I would have been happy with ceiling fans. You've got ceiling fans as well as split systems. Yeah. Wow. Fuck. Hmm. So turn, crank the, the split systems down to 18 degrees, turn the ceiling fans up to high, and you can pretend that you're in Victoria. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'd have to lock myself in first. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's funny, but it isn't. How's our boy Novak doing? Don't care. Sort of. I saw he was in front of the judge again last night after the failed attempt to deport him. Right. Justice Kelly said, Hey, if you guys are going to do anything that impacts one another, Novak or the federal government, it's coming in front of me. Right. And so after... Immigration Minister Hawke made his announcement yesterday that he was going to cancel the visa. It automatically ended up back in front of the same judge. Right. That said no before. Right. <laughs> um, and I followed it for about an hour, and then they took a recess. But it doesn't look good for the federal government. No. They're being illegal again. Right. It'll be the most talked about not tennis tournament ever. Hmm. All right. So he's not in immigration detention, and the deportation has been put on hold. The reason that the federal government is trying to get rid of him is because he stirs up anti-vaccine sentiment. Ah, oh, what a crock. It what is a crock. a crock. I mean, double vax rates are, what, 92% nationally. Mm -hmm. 93 even. People who don't want it aren't going to get it. They don't need a tennis player from bumfuck nowhere. <laughs> Pardon my French. <laughs> uh, hello to, to tell them. Serbians. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I, let's face it. Who can actually place Serbia on a map? Well, I know where it is. Roughly or actually? Uh, if I gave you a, 
a world map without any national boundaries drawn on it. No names. Could you point to it? Uh, I reckon I could get close. Yeah, but actually it'll just close. Well, you know, it, it isn't you, that you get big. get point. You, no, but it isn't that big. <laughs> <laughs> and I might get it confused with C Croatia, which would get me, like, murdered. Very much dangerous, yep. yep. Uh, but, yeah. Like, I know where the Balkans are. Hmm. You know, that split between uh, Croatia, Serbia, Macedonia. I wouldn't know those exact borders, no. Fair enough. Buy whole chickens to combat labour shortage. Farmers are urging consumers to buy whole birds and learn how to bone them at home to help ease the supply chain crisis. Maybe just don't bone them. Mm. I thought that was all done by machine anyway. Yeah, I don't know. What are you reading? The uh, Herald Sun front page. So here's a question. Why read the Herald song? No. This piece here. You see how there's a... Obviously, with the 20-second lag, this is going to be an interesting conversation, but there's a piece here which is obviously a fabric piece. There's a, yep. a couple of leather straps that run here. Mm -hmm. Do we think that that cloth piece extends up and over with the tail coming through the cloth piece, or do we think that this is actually horse skin hair and that the piece of cloth only hangs below? Given oh, it wouldn't hang below. Given this piece here, you can see this chain above the leather line and cloth below it. You could argue that this cloth would be the same as that cloth, and therefore it doesn't extend above, and that would be skin. Mm. Do we care? Is it a more interesting figure if it's skin hair above and cloth only below? I think that would look bloody silly. Hmm. So we'll pretend that the cloth extends. Well, no, we'll just make a decision that the cloth extends. I yeah. think that's the clear intention. That it's a, a horse blanket that goes over the bag as a little bit of protection from arrows or what have you. Yeah. Flies, mainly. Well, flies, arrows, both are annoying, mm. black little things going, whistling through the air. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and haven't the flies been bad this year? Ah, uh, flies. A very, <sighs> unhappy, a very unhappy puppy. The flies have been especially bad up here because of the the wet weather. Mm -hmm. um, during the breeding season, flies love to breed in wet weather. Yeah. So there have been tons of them around. And, you know, four garbage skips not ten metres from my workplace. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, yeah, that would be obnoxious. Plus, you know, everything else that comes in. Uh, stories I could tell but won't. Mm. <laughs> Sounds like a, a, a... At least it isn't dull. Oh no, it's never dull. Mm. This week was a relatively slow week. I was able to clear one of my workbenches and clean it for the first time in four months. Right. 
but it's mostly slow because I keep turning people away saying no sorry I'm full I can't take your Manchester or bedding I yeah. swear to god 50 sets of bed sheets yesterday really 50 50 yeah. 50 how does somebody end up with 50 sets of bed sheets uh, you put a sign out the front saying we accept donations right and people just roll them into you right so that wasn't one person no no okay. it wasn't one person um most people were bringing two or three sets each yeah when okay. they were bringing some there was one woman who had seven bags of it right. that she'd been saving up for the rspca yeah the rspca's local rspca is being closed for donations since the start of december because of covid and, yeah and they don't want people to see that they're killing all the dogs anyway uh, mm. rspca has been sending everyone to us uh so we're getting well unsaleable for human quality uh manchester yeah that was you know destined for animal use and we can't sell it so we got to turf it mm -hmm. uh so the other day we made a deal with the um uh the nearby vet hospital it's just around the corner from us mm. and they will take all of our towels and blankets that we don't want oh, that's good but we're still stuck with bed sheets, mm. yeah, bed sheets. and my charities have just arrived so i'll hang out for as long as i can okay i wondered what the and whistling you know, noise was oh that was the uh, automatic garage door opener yeah now those are a wonderful invention they certainly are Three minutes early. He definitely wants to be at the pub by eleven. <laughs> yeah, the most difficult part of the aircon installation that they did for us was having to completely replace the switchboard in the house. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, that'd be a good one. Well, it was a nightmare. The the guy that had lived here that we bought the property off for us was an electrician, so we had... All of his own work to contend with. That's right, and he didn't bother replacing the main board. He just stuck subboards in. So... The main board plus two subboards came out to be replaced by a single coherent main board with enough capacity to add a subboard in the workshop, which is now in the workshop. Fair enough. Mm. I wish I could wear tank tops to work. <laughs> yeah. There's a dress code? Yep. <clears throat> Assuming it's not suit and tie. Oh, Christ, no. <laughs> that was a battle that I actually won at work. Not, not, that, not that I was fighting it alone, but... Um, the R&D department, I think, was successful in getting the dress code relaxed because it was um, business shirt, slacks and shoes, Monday to Thursday, and then casual Friday. And we went, well, why, if we can, if it's okay on a Friday, why isn't it okay every other day? Because morale, they want you to not have three-day weekends. <laughs> so, um... That was the justification that I fought in my previous life in construction. Yeah, really. Because it was the same dress code, exactly the same. Yep. <clears throat> it's like... It was a. It was almost a silent protest. Was that some of us just started wearing casual during the week, and <clears throat> there was a little bit of a 
push back and uh, eventually the uh, site management just gave up and they, they conceded the point. Happy employees are productive employees yes. sometimes. Sometimes. Oh, my brushwork this morning is outstanding. Well, you've had a bit of a warm up. <laughs> I was well, I was basing the orcs a few days ago and I slipped with the hand that was holding the model as I was spreading the basing material around with the brush and it was like basing material right up the entire figure. That's like, so he's been rolling around in the mud. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Or the gravel or what have you. Yes. And it's really sharp and pointy and it's really stuck into it. <laughs> oh. A little bit of water on a damp brush later and the uh, crisis was averted. But uh, there may have been a few choice expletives used. So is this uh, Wildwood or is this... Um... This is Saigor Brown. Okay. Which is... Uh, it's a... It, it's a... Hmm. I'm trying to think of how to describe it. It's not as dark as Wildwood. Ah... by the time you put wildwood on and you've given them a wash and everything like that they're very very dark it's like a, almost a black horse Horses can be black. Black beauty. Mm hmm. They're not that common. But still. Saw on a TV show. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't even black beauty. Saw one on the internet. Well, that counts. And. I'm going to do the last one in Gore Grunter. So I just, you know, out of laziness and uniformity, I went for uh, matching uh, horse hair colours mm -hmm. on my uh, mounted knights with the cleansing dark that I'm working on mm -hmm. in snake bite leather. Yeah. Because all of the barding is going to be super dark anyway. Right. So, yeah. But well, the uniformity of the horsehair in in a unit, I think, like that would look good, and I'll just vary it up on the socks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so that, that's just what I'm doing for the audience. There's, there's no right way, there's no wrong way. I, I like a no, little bit not. of variety in the horse colour, but you yeah. don't have to have it. When I was doing the cavalry for my Roman army a couple of years ago, we were doing some research to figure out, you know, because horses were smaller, um, you know, we've, we've bred horses to be monsters by now, whereas uh, they weren't anywhere near that big on average back in the Roman times. Um, and we were looking at colours, because, you know, you, you do things like <coughs> palominos and, and things like that. Um, 
uh, and I'm probably going to get this wrong, it might not be the Palomino, but there are a couple of horse breeds that simply didn't exist that far back. Or the American ones, for example. Well, yeah. Um, and discovered that... Oh, that was the brand new Gore Grunter, as opposed to the other one that I've used before. Bugger. Never mind. Um... So what happens when you go shopping for paint without your um, paint database with you, you end up with duplicates. Um, primarily grey for the rope stuff that the Romans had around at that time. Which I thought was very interesting because grey is not a predominant colour now. I didn't realise that. Hmm. The last horses I saw with my own actual literal eyes were greys. Like right. stippled grey. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. just yeah. Anyway. But as a result the majority of the horses I have in that Roman up not that there are very many, but the majority are grey. It was an eye opener. It's 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 very interesting living with somebody who who owned and rode horses for a significant amount of time. How much my uh, horse painting has improved? Because you know she'll take one look at it and go, "That doesn't look like what a horse looks like." So you learn to ask before you paint. So. <laughs> You don't have to repaint. Or you could ask Clee to send you his book of... Uh, his daughter's book of ponies. Ponies. You could. But only if you're, you're not gonna, angry, are you? Yeah, you're only not if rage you're painting. rage painting. <laughs> I still want that on a t-shirt. we got to come up with a t-shirt designed for that. Yeah. A line drawing of a of a horse that's half coloured in. Yep. Rage painting a pony. I thought from that reference he might have joined the live stream. He was talking about it yesterday, but uh, not yet. Uh, Alright, it sounds like I'm going to have to bugger off. Mm. Well. I will continue watching as best I can, and I'll chat with you, uh, if not tonight, tomorrow. Good stuff. Thanks, Matty. Thanks, Dan. Have a good one. Yeah, Enjoy the rest of the stream. I'll, show, I'll, well, I'll certainly try. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dear, I'm looking forward to watching it. So, cool. um, you know. I have to start figuring out how to talk to myself again. Right, okay. See you These guys, who are basically all metal with pants. So, continue the yellow theme for the pants.
Mm. We've got two different types of sleeves, feathers and ribbons. Okay. Missed some of the mould lines on this guy. His his lance is somewhat bent. I need to fix that. Being super careful with the yellow because I'll come back and depending where the metal is going to go over it, it doesn't matter because the metal's got good enough coverage that it'll just go over it. Apologies, there'll be a little bit of noise. My partner's just returned, so. Cat hair, ah, uh, pets, <coughs> good fun. So, we'll do the metal on the horses. So it's the chain here. And these plates across the back of the neck. I've missed this one's ears.
All right. Let me just repeat that five times. Trying not to make too much of a mess with the metal. does actually have a nose piece which I didn't do on this one decide whether this piece down the side of the head is metal or leather I think it might look better if it's metal so. Okay, back on with this one. chain down here. Question is 
Well, there isn't any chain exposed under there on that one. I don't think we got all of that one. Wash the brush. Then a bit more of a shake. Have a drink. Number three. Bristle. It doesn't want to play nice. So you can go and play somewhere else. Okay. There's another one coming out the side of the brush. Decided to stick out at a nasty angle.
I think I've got all of that. What's number four? And this brush is probably down to its last few miniatures. Bristles are starting to go all over the place. down here reckon those ones I've done previous I've missed a piece so different. Alright, wash the brush again. Out. Morning, Dan. Hey, Clee, how are you? Too bad. How's the weather where you are? Is it stopped raining? Yeah, it's 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 finally stopped raining. We had showers the last couple of days, but uh, I think last one was yesterday morning. That should be it now for a couple of days, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get started on that bamboo? Burning it. 
Oh, just cutting it. I have been cutting it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and burning it. <laughs> been burning it Monday, Tuesday. It was burning for days. Huge piles of it. Oh, wow. When the floods. Did I tell you we got flooded? Oh, I probably didn't tell you. No, no, no. Tell me that story. Did you hear about the floods in Gimpy and stuff like that? No. Right, okay. Well, uh, last week or so. <laughs> last Thursday or Friday, I think. Um, X tropical cyclone came ashore and unexpectedly just parked itself above, um, sort of like between. Gimpy and um, sort of Rainbow Beach and a bit further north, maybe Bundaberg or something, but more more so a bit south. Yeah. Uh, for about twenty four hours. Right. <laughs> um, and people weren't expecting it; they were expecting it to just pass over. Yeah. Um, so some places had up to six hundred and fifty mil in twenty four hours. <laughs> Uh, the average was two to three hundred mil yeah. in the area. Um, we were just south of the hardest bits. I think we got like about a hundred and fifty mil. Right. Um, two hundred fifty mil for the week, but a hundred and fifty mil in twenty four hours. Right. So our creek, just the the, this between our house and the main part of town, was up about five meters. Five meters. Yeah, it was just below the bridge. It had flooded the netball courts. It yeah. had flooded the bridge into the other town. Um, and it was a, about, like I said, it was about 50 centimetres under the bridge. It flooded our road, Tablelands Road. So yeah. from, there's a valley that leads down um, a couple of blocks and where the last before it hits the main creek right so we have a seasonal creek yeah yeah and it's dammed all the way up every house has one or two dams or whatever yeah and so that was up a lot obviously and it was up, and because the main creek was up so much and there was so much th flowing through ours that our dam was up about two meters right and our road was uh, flooded for about 50 meters with about 20 centimetres of water going over the road into the main creek. Yeah. Our block. Right. So how far up the where, block where was the it? We're the last one. Sorry, what's that? How far up the block was it? Um, well, from our block was flooded all the way to the neighbour's block. Yeah, but... And his, dr his drive was nearly under... Oh, maybe about like a quarter of our block. Right, yeah, okay. So Yeah, so maybe half an acre of water. Yeah. So, a, a long way below the house. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah like six or seven metres below the house. There'd right. be a lot of other houses flooding before our house floods. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no one was in danger of flooding in our area. Right. Um, but, but there was a lot of water. A lot of water passing through. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so there's a fair bit of bamboo to clean up from that. Um, yeah. Because... Um, because our thing was up so much, our damn wall flooded. Yeah. Um, and we, I had a hole in the damn wall, and I was over there looking at it, and you know, checking how the water level is it's rising and stuff. Anyway, I was just heading back, and Beanie fell in the fucking hole. No, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> so we had to get in there. Um. And she couldn't, like, get out. She was, like, in a tunnel of water. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? The hole that goes under the, the dam wall. Um, so we had to get in there and fucking pull her out. And then I had to... I thought, fuck that, I'll cave the hole in now. Yeah, it right. Deep. Like, it was like... There were, because there was so much water had been rushing through, mm. um, it had carved out some, some whirlpool holes. Yeah. So there were some real big sinkholes that weren't there before. Yeah. So it was like three foot, four foot deep in spots. Yeah. Whoa. It had just carved out these huge holes where it had been spinning water around. Yeah. 
uh, and 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 digging out down. So you should drop the shovel in, you almost lose it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, so we caved it all in, filled them up. I dropped four big boulders in, yeah. and you didn't see a single one above the water in that hole. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so it was, and there, so I was just cleaning up all the bamboo from that. Mm. Did it did knock any over? No, 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 no. Just shit that they got floating around, and right. had to cut the stuff down, and yeah. So uh, far, too much fun. Yeah. So be eventful. But um. Would have been a good education for the kids. Yeah, they loved it. They were they were um, they had their kayaks out on the netball court, <laughs> 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 and um, they were swimming through all the the. We had like plantation um, koala fodder, so right. they were swimming through that area, and you know, because no one was in danger of flooding here. It's a bit of an event. Yeah, the kids were out playing in it, you know. But the main creek was hectic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How how high it had gone? Because you know, when you go five meters up, it takes a whole forest with it. Yeah, and that's a lot so, of water. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. We just we haven't got. Well, we never get those levels of rain anyway. But it, it's all that stuff that we've been getting last couple of weeks down here it's all been going around us it's like, yeah, right. yeah it's almost like you know whether we're in a boat and the water's passing so we've had you know maybe 10 mil maybe combined over the whole lot of it and there are some places that have had 100 mil some places have had more than that so it's just yeah, right. yeah really like the sun thunderstorms that we've been getting have been really isolated and yep. some of them have been really isolated but have persisted for hours yeah i think there was a thunderstorm that sat over ballarat for a day yeah right and you know flooded significant portions of the area around there interesting yeah so I was saying to Matty earlier, normally, like we had thunderstorms come through last night, and yeah. normally when the thunderstorm comes through, you get that relief, you get the the cooler temperature with the, and you might have, you know, wet yeah, air or whatever. Front of cool air, yeah. Yeah, we're not getting it, you know. We've had thunderstorms come through, and um, an hour after the thunderstorms come through, the sun's back out, the humidity's at eighty percent, and you're rocketing back over thirty degrees again. Yeah, right. So, That's uh, a bit more like us. Yeah, it's really uncomfortable. You can see the water traps on our aircons are running. Like, they're, they're not dripping, they're running. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. That's the same as ours does that here, too. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the aircon pulls some moisture out of the air. Yeah. So, yeah, good fun stuff. I expect in a week or so, a week more of this, that everything in the house will be mouldy. And you would not believe how much stuff we have to either throw out or try and fix or put up with, with the way it is now because of mould. Mm -hmm. You know, hats that are stained now or things like that yeah um, all yeah. sorts of shit man yeah. even uh my music uh, audio cables and stuff if they collect dust then they mold it doesn't oh, yeah. do anything but it's <laughs> just fucking covered in mold oh, yeah <laughs> like yeah. what yeah <laughs> so then you gotta go and clean all the cables yeah. that are lying on the floor yeah, yeah. you know yeah. can't have any dust settle on stuff it's crazy yeah it's just different set of considerations yeah it is annoying <laughs> what are you painting so we're doing nights 
so that's what the the infantry figure looks like oh, that's yeah. what the horse looks like so there's quite a bit of detail on them so these will take quite a while I would have thought yeah I quite enjoyed the dwarf ponies <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about that earlier about getting the t-shirt for uh, rage <laughs> painting <laughs> uh, I might might try and come up with a design or get somebody to come up with a design for me and, and put them up on Redbubble what's Redbubble? Oh, it's just a t-shirt manufacturing sort of thing you, you produce your own artwork and put it up there and I mean, they'll put it on anything, not just T-shirts, pillows, throw rugs, laptop cases, phone cases, yeah, mugs, whatever. whatever. Like, yeah. if if you can hold it still for ten seconds, they'll print something on it. Huh? You know. <laughs> Child playing Nintendo. <laughs> I'm playing a little bit of War Master this morning. Hiya! Yeah. Where's that happening? Oh, not playing with, um, as in painting. Ah, right. Uh, doing yeah. my test colours and things like that. I'm looking forward to seeing that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, they're not that hard to paint. I'm a little bit... Yeah, I know what it is. Because you get that real mass effect of troops at that scale. Yes, I. That's what I'm really kind of looking for because I've actually got um, quite decent sized armies too, mm. so that you can see that real mass effect rather than just being a skint miniature army yeah not not a skirmish thing it's a, it's actually an army yeah, yeah 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 you're talking army level yeah mind you i can do that with 28 millimeter romans but moving on uh, oh. <laughs> yeah well that's <laughs> that's crazy yeah, it was only 12 months worth of work yeah so, I don't think I've got anything that would come near that many miniatures. Yes, you I have. Think I would have to yes, you have. You've got what? a Tyranid army that's easily bigger than that. Oh, yeah, I guess. Tyranids might do it. They are. There is a lot of them. Yeah, that would actually do it. I was thinking fantasy stuff. No, no. no. Well... Is 40k fantasy or is it science fiction? Or is it science fantasy? Science fantasy. Yeah. Uh, hang on a second. Go on.
apologies for the tortured toy noises. Tyranids, mass armies, armies. the yes. armies. Yeah. Well, there, that was what I want from Master, is that, that scale. Yep. I reckon I've got probably about the same number of Demon World Orcs as I have Romans. 400 men. 400 or I think, yeah. Of which I'm well over halfway. Well, I think I've got right. maybe 260 of them painted. Wow, that's epic. Yeah, I posted... You might have seen it. I posted a pic to Instagram of all the Demon World stuff I painted last year. Be close to 500 figures. Oh, yeah, man. For Demon World, yeah. Not counting everything else. 500 figures, man. That's crazy. What? Well, I, I told you what my output was for 2019, didn't I? Was that the Roman year? Yeah, Year of the Romans. The year of the Romans. The year of the Romans. I think so. I think you said it was like 500 or something because you did Romans plus some or something. Didn't no, you? no, it was 1300. 1300? Yeah, it was 1300 figures in a year. Wow. That, okay, so it was 1250, but you know what I mean. It, it's like yeah. uh, I'm never going to achieve that like ever again. Wow. That's insane. <laughs> Yeah, and that's all. That's all. Fifteen mil. That's they were twenty eights mostly. Yeah, that, yeah, mostly twenty eight. <laughs> there were some fifteens well, in there. Maybe a few mix. Oh yeah, okay. The sci-fi one. Uh, no, it would have been Flames of War. Would oh, been, no. it would have been a World War Two stuff. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was. That was the year of sitting on my butt with a paintbrusher man. That's what that year was. Yeah. A terrible year professionally, so I took it out on my hobby. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think I got like a hundred done. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with that. A hundred rats. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we had a completely different painting philosophy at the time. You were doing three or four layers on everything through each colour and yeah I was standing back from about two feet and throwing paint in their general direction <laughs> but yeah I'm never going to see those numbers like ever again it just there's too many other things to do Crazy numbers, isn't it? Mm hmm. You know, the, the dedication to making sure that you get two units done a week, every week regardless and you know you're talking for the Romans it, those units were 20 figures that's insane so yeah you're doing 40 figures based every week in and out every week yeah. that's insane <laughs> I was just, just, it was interesting. At the time, I was listening a 
fair bit to Gorilla Miniatures, to Ash Barker, and he was talking about the fact that he was knocking out 1,200 figures a year. I mean, you know, that's his business, that's his, that's his life, that's what he does. He, he does, you know, game reviews and videos and uh, you know I think he probably spends a fair bit of his time recording and editing videos but at the same time he's also preparing armies for those videos so you know when he's doing a an Age of Sigma series or something like that he's got to have the figures painted for Age of Sigma so he gets those boxes I think sometimes workshop sends him the boxes sometimes he buys his own stuff not sure what his relationship with workshop is but um, you know he's got to knock them out and whenever I've seen the battle reports that he's put up that he's filmed the figures are always of, of an excellent table quality yeah. you know they're not they're not golden demon and he's but he's not pretending that they are they, they are what they are they they're good enough you know, he's That's done... That's I want, good table quality. Yeah. Yeah. He's done a heap of Infinity. Yep. Like a heap of Infinity battle reports, and all of those figures all look really good. You know, a bunch yep. of Necromunda, a bunch of... A whole bunch of different stuff. He started a Battletech series last year. I haven't kept up. Wow. But it was like it was just that it was it was inspiring. It's like wow, you know, this guy has the dedication, along doing all of this other stuff, of being able to you know knock that kind of work rate out. So you know, I wonder if I can do that too. And it turns out I could. But My God. I've got, you know, we've got full time jobs, so. I wonder if I could do that in War Master. <laughs> <laughs> you could certainly try. It's just a different philosophy. It's like, I'm not going to do the layering here. I'm going to rely on the wash to do the layering for me. And not, not spend so much time on each colour. Yeah. That's what I kind of try nowadays more with the World War Two stuff. Mm -hmm. I try and use the Zenithal uh, for soft highlights. Yep. And the wash for the shadows and the contrast. And then I'll just go over each colour with one or two highlights. And that seems to be enough to get it done and on the table. <clears throat> to the level that you're happy with. Yeah, done it in the cabinet in my case. Yeah. Games <laughs> are happening, but <laughs> no. nevertheless, same principle. Well, that's, that's all that happens in my place, they go in the cabinet. Um, did you see those mechs I did a couple of weeks ago? Oh, if it was in the height of Christmas, I probably wasn't on the phone a whole lot. Because of Asher and family stuff. Oh, yeah. You had house guests for weeks, didn't you? Yep. I had to do family entertaining things, you know. Mm. So... Go check it out. Did Q come on? No. no he right. went to Coffs Harbour. He did, so he did go away. Right, but he went to Coffs Harbour. He went to Coffs Harbour, not all the way up. That number that you gave me yesterday for him, that comes up as you in my phone. Did you give him your number? Uh, no, I probably just gave you my number. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>
That that whole twins thing is ridiculous enough without that. <laughs> uh, it's hilarious. I'm just so used to writing mine down and not his. Right. I have the other problem. It's because I never need to know mine. <laughs> so it's like, uh, what's my right. number again? <laughs> that would have been funny. I'd send him a text message last night. He, if I had, because I didn't, because it came up as you, and I'm like, oh, I'll need to check that before I do anything else. But um, if I'd sent him a text message, it would have gone to you. That would have been really funny. It would have been hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I hate how metallics clog your brush up. Yeah, well. Do two, two figures, wash your brush. Do two, two figures, wash your brush. What really annoys me is how fast, in, in particular in this weather, how fast the metallic skin. Oh, uh, it's, it's not just me that has it. Like, oh, no. they, they just, I, I often have, um, I mix paint retarder with it. Yep. I have a Tamiya one, which is a nice and thin one. Yep. So it's not go goop and thicky like the Vallejo one. Yep. Uh, and I often thin it with a bit of that. Yeah. So it doesn't clog the brush and goes on quickly and... Doesn't dry so it. fast, so you don't end up with those damn pull lines. Yep. I was watching a, a video during the week of a guy painting using Tamiya paints. And he was saying, this is how you get the Tamiya paints on with brushes, how you get them on really smoothly. And he did exactly that. It was a 10% retarder. Yeah, and their retarder is completely different to any other one I've seen. Mm. It's it's kind of more like FlowAid. Yeah. Really. yeah. Uh, and I know FlowAid does um, slow your paint drying. But it's not the same thing. No. Um, it's the main thing is the tension breaker. But, yeah. But this one, um, yeah, it's nice and runny, and um, it's easy to just dip your brush in when it's clean. Mix it in the paint. Well, I don't go. know. I'm pretty sure that I got a Vallejo retarder because I've decanted it, and. You're probably not going to be able to see this, but this is really liquid. Oh but, yeah, I can see it. But it's not. See. It's not the Tamiya one. But I used it in some Tamiya paint last night or the night before or something like that. It worked really, really well. It meant that the the brushwork, the it took the brush stroke out of the surface. Yeah. Yep. So. Yeah, that's that's wicked. So yeah. is that? Because I've got the retarder medium. Maybe I've bought one that's a bit the, the medium as well as oh, the retarder. Yeah, I've got a. There's a goopy one around here somewhere, which is it's like right, a, okay, almost yeah. a gel. Yeah, that's that's the one I've got from Vallejo. It's like Ooh. that. Yeah. Let me have a quick look. <laughs> nope. Plenty of airbrush thinner. Flow improver. Oh yeah, okay. Atelier. Right. Low viscosity retarder. So I must have got that from a um Art supply oh, yeah. shop, yeah. Yeah. Low viscosity, add to acrylics to slow down the drying time and increase the op open time of acrylic paints. So that's what I'm. What's what I used, and so that must be a similar sort of concept to what they're doing with the Tamiya stuff. Um, 
but yeah I had like a really good result with it so we'll keep doing that obviously I don't need to use them for the contrast But yeah, it works a treat because on the metals, I also don't put them on my wet palette. I just use a tile. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it gives you a little bit more working time on the tile. Yeah. Yeah. Problem's getting the ratio right. Because, like, he was decanting into a, a mixing tray and then dropping the retarder in on the mix oh, the mixing yeah, tray. Yeah. And it's like... What you probably could, if you never wanted to do anything else with that particular paint pot, but brush paint, you could probably just mix it in the pot and leave it like that, so that it was just ready to go whenever you opened the pot. But the problem is, yeah, is that I really want to be able to use these Tamiya's to airbrush because there's a they go on super super flat, like their mat is super flat. Um, what? sort of paints are they they're just the, they the tamir acrylics acrylics right yeah but they're they are an alcohol base not a water base right so they're a they're almost a hybrid they're an alcohol acrylic not a water acrylic i think that's right oh just chuck stuff everywhere crush figures that's a good good idea you see this is an acrylic but you see there's a flammable symbol on it yeah i think that's because it's uh, alcohol based and and the cleanup on these uh works absolutely brilliantly with the isopropyl alcohol so Yeah. Let me just check. No, you. Oh no, mine are different. Sorry. What are yours? Because they also do enamels. No, mine are Mister Color. Ah, right. Yeah. No, I think and they are acrylic, acrylic, uh, water acrylics. No, this is um. It's not an enamel. It's not acrylic. Wow. What's the other one? Isn't there another type? I don't know. I don't use it so often. Uh, and it's there's similar a, to... There's lacquer based. Lacquer, that's it. It's oh, a lacquer. Okay. Something like that, yeah. Well, that's again, that's petroleum based. So, you know, cleaning up with terps or something, aren't you? Or can you uh, clean those I up with alcohol? I've no, I bought uh, a Tamiya lacquer cleaner. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Lacquer thinners by Tamiya. Yeah. So I, use, I use that. But I bought them specifically for aeroplanes, model uh -huh. aeroplanes. So, oh, I'll show you what I mean. You have a look at the surface. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but maybe if I bring it up, look at the deck surface, because yeah. that's a hand brush deck surface. Wow. Yeah, it's had a wash on it, so you know everybody that's looking at it going, "Oh my god, that looks terrible." It's had a wash on it, so it was yeah, deliberate. Yeah. Um, I can't yeah. see if I show the side. The sides were airbrushed, so you know that. Yeah. that but that's not what I was talking about. I was talking about the deck. Getting yep. the, the deck smooth. Yeah, nice. That worked beautifully. Is that those one seven hundred scale yep. ones you're talking about? Yeah, that's that's the E class destroyer that I was telling you all about. Nice. Yeah, nice little model. Yeah, um, they look wicked, don't yeah, they? Yeah. So I'm gonna. Be... I've got half a dozen or more destroyers to do before I get into the cruisers. <laughs> and, 
can never remember. Are the cruisers bigger or bigger, smaller? Bigger, yeah. So bigger. we go up inside. So we go from the destroyers to the cruisers, and then we go from the cruisers to the battleships. Yep. Okay, right. We've got a significant pile. Of them? Yes. People are referring to this as the pile of shame. It's not the pile of shame, people at all. It's the pile of opportunity. The pile of opportunity. <laughs> this is uh, all. This is all dream fuel, right? That's yeah, that's well. That's what I was thinking. Um, and something you were mentioning the other day about getting intimidated by the amount in that pile. Yeah. And I'm like, no, man. That's like the pile of dreams. That's, that's like. It. That's I'm it. looking forward to everyone in that little pile, man, in that big pile, man. That's it. It's about <laughs> turning it around. It's going green, man. Dreams. Look how look how big I'm dreaming. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. One day it'll be all there. Yep. As long as we've got the cabinet space. So these guys have got sashes. So they've got armor underneath. He's got gauntlets on. Sashes over the top for and color. Sashes. So if I do the sashes green, that should pick out the armor quite nicely. So back to the armor. What's the time? Twenty minutes. Um so what you have, time is it there? Uh, 20 to 10 yeah. And you do it 9 till 10 normally? Nine, uh, 8 till 10 8 till 10? Yeah So that's your 7 till 9 Oh uh, yeah, you know what? Hmm? My alarm <laughs> is on pre-daylight savings time <laughs> Yeah <laughs> oh, the amount of issues we've had with time zones, particularly talking to the faster guys, because they're, you know, the best part of a day behind. And it's yeah. like our regular Friday meeting is the start time of that's been wobbling about all over the place because <laughs> none of us can figure out what time it is the, the other locations. Yeah, man, that sucks. Doesn't yeah, it's. <laughs> Right, so you've already been on for an hour and twenty, hour and forty, sorry. Yeah, Maddie was here for the first part because, uh, and he had to drop off because they're installing air conditioning at his place. It was even more amusing on Christmas Day when I started at seven my time, because that was six your time. You did one on Christmas Day. I did. I was wondering if you were doing that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You did one New Year's Day too. Well. Yeah, well, I was asleep by 9.30 New Year's Eve. New Year's so. Eve, yeah, so were we. Oh, no, we weren't. We weren't, because we went out and saw The Matrix. Yep, I think. or something. No, we went out and saw The Matrix, so I didn't think... Oh, the new Matrix. Yeah, we didn't get home till uh, 11 o'clock or something. I didn't realise it was already out. Yeah, it's probably been and gone. <laughs> was we it were, good? We, uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, you know, was it good? That's such a subjective thing. Uh, I, I think I'd prefer to say I enjoyed it. Uh, there was a lot of criticism aimed at it because it was uh, it was long. I think it was more than two and a half hours or something. But, um, yeah. look, I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, cool. We saw June a couple of weeks earlier than that too, and I really enjoyed that as well. It's just, it's all, it was also long. Um, uh, that's even funnier when you realise that that was the the June was only half the film. <laughs> it was only part one. Yeah, right. So, but yeah. Yeah, our neighbours had a street party New Year's Eve, so we weren't going to be able to get to sleep. But we were out, so it didn't really matter. Yep. Well, it's a bit quiet around 
haven't you? Yeah. That was the whole reason for going there, wasn't it? Mm, more so the space. Yeah. Quiet as well, yeah. Mind you, though, my favourite thing, or one of my favourite things about here is hearing the trains rumble down the valley. Oh, right. So, quiet, but not too quiet. Right. <laughs> Yeah, and I love it. You get the big diesels. I can hear them chugging up the hill as they yeah. towing a big lot of uh, containers north or whatever, and or occasionally there's maybe it's a big cattle train going south or something. Like yeah, that. yeah. Oh, it's, anyway, you can hear them just struggling away for quite a while because of where the valley is. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Nice. I actually, do miss that because the last place we had puffing Billy. In range, so. Ah, uh, yep. And, and this is a busy railway line. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Services the whole of Queensland. Yeah. The railway corridor. Yeah. So, so Pu we've got obviously we're between Brisbane and Gympie, so we hear that traffic. Yeah. Plus, then of course everything that goes Brisbane to to FNQ. Yeah. So how many a day? Couple. Yeah. Half yep. a dozen, maybe? Oh, right. Yeah. It's north, south, north, south, north, south, constantly. Yeah. That'd Sometimes be... I'll pull over. That'd be wicked. Yep. I'd be down there all the time with cameras and stuff. I'd never get anything yeah. done. <laughs> <laughs> They're mostly the same couple of guys. Uh, same. There's two main companies that I've seen. Yeah. But I think there's, like, every now and then, they'll have... There's, there's some special ones that go through maybe coal, maybe cattle or something, I don't know. Mm -hmm. They sound different and I haven't, I don't think I've seen them. So, so yeah, and you get them at night too, you'll hear them mm -hmm. in the middle of the night, you'll hear, which is cool because you hear them from further. Yeah. So you, so you can really hear them going up and down a few hills, which yep. is nice. Yep. You hear the load come on. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You can hear the whining of... I don't know if they're turbines. Yeah, or no, they'd be turbines. or they'd be whatever. Tur Turbocharged diesels. Yeah, so you, sometimes you can hear that whining noise mm -hmm. of the, the engine as well, which is cool. Oh, the the depends if they're going downhill. The whine would probably be the dynamic brakes. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, I. I wouldn't get anything done, Clee. I'd be down there constantly, just watching them go past. I used to live in the north of Melbourne, up yep. north of Broad Meadows, and of course, within striking distance of the Broad Meadows rail line. But I oh, get. Yeah. Um, you used to see those big freights go north from from Melbourne out on the standard gauge because there was. It, there was three lines, um, two with a broad gauge for the suburban stuff, and then there was a standard gauge for the national stuff. And you see, see the stuff go out on the the standard gauge, and they'd be, you know, two up locomotives going flat knacker up the hill out through Broad Meadows, towing. All sorts of mixed stuff, steel containers, whatever. You know, yeah, the hump of the Great Dividing. Well, not yeah, we went that far north, but um, it was it's a reasonable grade from the bridge over the valley up through Broad Meadows. So they're under load when they're going northbound. So the yeah. same sort of thing, you know, you hear them miles away on a clear night. Right. Yeah, I used to used to walk the dog along the rail line. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And every now and again, you'd get lucky enough, and I'd go pounding north, and I'd just stop and just watch. Yeah, I usually watch because I'll see them as the same thing. Walking where I walk the dog, I can see them. Yeah, going to the Jenny, you see them. You know, yeah. So pretty much, you move here, you see them. So. Yeah. A lot of years ago, we used to live in Glenroy, and um, 
there's a trestle bridge across the valley. Oh yeah. And you used to be able to just walk you know, 50 metres down from the house and you could see them coming across this trestle bridge. That's so that was cool. that was cool, yeah. Fair old trestle bridge too. Pretty tall. Wow. Because Mooney Valley's pretty deep. So anyhow, I, I can't help myself if trains around. I'll just stand um, and watch. Yeah, it's pretty cool seeing them go. Yeah, and it, it's ridiculous to the point where I stand in my workshop and watch the train set go around. But you know. It's just one of those things. <laughs> yeah, they're cool machines, man. Yeah. There's this, I don't know, there's power and there's majesty and that sort of stuff. You didn't, you didn't really get that so much with Puffing Billy because, on the whole, they're not very big locomotives. But then, I don't know if you know, but they brought a couple of. South African mallets which are those no. com compound articulated locomotives have you seen those no. well the frames articulated so it's a really really big locomotive but they've articulated the frame because on the narrow gauge the radius of the, the, the bend, curves yeah. are too tight that they can't put the really big locomotives on it yep. so you've got this this weird arrangement where the boiler's sort of turning before the rest of the locomotive sort of thing and you know they've got um the water tank up front and the 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 coal hop uh, down the back um they're strange looking things anyhow they're watching those things flog around on a um narrow gauge track that that's really something else and they had a couple of those in steam before we left emerald so i'd seen them a couple of times they're, they're impressive watching them go over the wooden trestles that's cool yeah but i don't I, i'm not sure puffing billy's running at the moment like last time i went Good through stuff. emerald on the bike um i was watching people walk down the rail line so like, you wouldn't be walking down the rail line if Puffing Billy was running. Maybe it's a COVID thing. Yeah, maybe. COVID casualty. Yeah. And my daily walk used to take me basically around a circuit of Puffing Billy Rail Line, so through Wright's Forest Spot. out the back, and you know, whenever it was running, I'd be sitting there watching it go past. Yep. It was particularly interesting coming out of Emerald Lake Park, going up towards Emerald itself. There's actually that's quite a grade with a lot of turns in it to get it up the hill, and so the locomotives are really working. You can really hear how much load the pistons are under as the exhaust open. You know, you get that really hard crack. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I um was planning on doing a Western Desert. Oh. Um, train diorama. Oh, nice. But you can't bloody get the the trains they used to use in any Ten. scale. Yeah. Unless you do it by kit. Right. Some guys have got some ha handmade kit. Yep. And you can buy his kit and it fits on a particular base and yep. you've got to build the whole thing from scratch. Yeah. Uh, not that dedicated. <laughs> um, which I was a bit sad about. Because I was looking forward to a... Um, desert style. 
desert style, you know, simple ish terrain. Yep. Because I wanted to focus more on the track engineering. Mm hmm. Um, with all that software I was writing and, and stuff. I would have a few points in there and the train station Al Alamein in there as well. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to have, um, a whole bunch of 10 mil British, you know, defending the mm -hmm. station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I was a bit bummed I really couldn't get the right train. Yeah. What's interesting, a mate of mine rang me yesterday to tell me that Battlefront have, have released a new series of Western Desert. So, a new series of box sets for mid-war Western Desert. Oh, really? So, yeah, new new starter boxes, American versus German, and then British versus Italian. Yeah. New national starter box sets and a few other bits and pieces. So, I'll probably grab an Italian starter and. When they release the Italian, Italian infantry, grab some Italian infantry. Yeah, cool. To go along with all the other piles of Western Desert stuff. Yeah, I have a ton of flames of water paint. Hmm. That's alright. Possibly take that measurement literally to... Yes, there were a few packages rocking up that weighed quite a few kilograms. <laughs> <laughs> I expect the package to rock up next Monday, Tuesday, which will be quite a few kilograms too. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the so, Ogre Army or something else? No, nah, Warmaster. Oh, the Warmaster. Just, um, yeah, a few Warmaster bits, like I said, the... Elephants and mammoths. Oh, and yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. Uh, a few random trolls, which I will use for the orc army. I don't know, about eight or so orc blisters. Uh, or maybe a few more orc blisters. A couple of orc stone throwers in there. Or, yeah, stone throwers. Some high elf stuff. Oh, that's right, the Phoenix Guard. Oh, yeah. Which is cool. So, six units of Phoenix Guard plus more general high elf crap. It's cool. So, that's next week. Yeah, so that he's posted it Wednesday. I think it'll be here. Right. Where'd that come from? New South Wales. Oh, okay. Yeah, guy. I bought a couple of things off him on eBay and put a little card in saying he's selling a whole bunch of stuff. Kind of yep. saw the list, forgot about it. Everyone bought a whole bunch of stuff, like those Bretonians and Empire and all the stuff. Mm, yeah. And I just picked up the bits that no one wanted, which was kind of the bits I wanted anyway. Yeah. Being that I, like I said, the Phoenix Guard and the mammoths and the elephants. Uh, the orcs only got them for the skull chuckers. Oh, they'd be pretty cool. They're wicked. They've got an, um, they're like a, a trebuchet. Yeah. Is that how you it? Yep. They're like one of those with a, um, a giant pulling it down. Ah, right. Oh, so lobbing a great rock off behind it. Yep. Sort of thing. Rather than a more traditional catapult or whatever else. Yep. Yeah, they look cool, man. And there's, of course, um, like the orc bull riders and wolf riders are wicked. Yeah. So there's a bunch of those in there. And black orcs and archers. Ah, good stuff. Yeah, so I thought I might make a start on some of this stuff, get some... Get a feeling for painting 10mm and... 
get a feeling for basing 10 mil. <laughs> I feel like that's probably going to be the biggest pain in the ass. Probably. Because, yeah, I think I want the bases to look nice. And if, if you check out half of the, the pictures around for Warmaster stuff, people have done an atrocious job. Oh, really? Yeah. To the point where they, they heart and, and on even Games Workshop stuff, you have a look at it. Mm. Um, some of them, they've kind of just stuck them on there, painted it all green without any filler or anything, so it's yeah. just stuck on top of a flat base. And then they they sprinkle a little bit of green flock on top, but you can still see the painted green underneath, so it's a real poor, poor job. Yeah, bodge. I'm like, why bother? If you, if you made the base look nice, you can get away with so much more on the actual miniature. Yeah. Um, and if you do do a good job on the miniature, of course, then it looks so much better. Yeah, so. I agree. So yeah, so it's going to be a real pain because they're quite tight on the bases. Right. So getting stuff in between them is going to be interesting. Yeah, so I think I'm, I'm going to try... Um, uh, yeah, some sort of filler... Something I can... It's easily... Um, kind of get level and sitting between them because it'll be two two racks or racks of mm -hmm. point 0.5.6 millimetre metal so you know if yeah. I can get something to sit nice and fluid between them so not that gel stuff I use probably like a filler filler yeah if so. you use a, a watered down polyfiller it finds yeah, its own level exactly because then I can have it not so watered down for the edges where I need to sculpt the yep. shape to make up the bit. Yep. Um, I don't want any texture in it because I want to do... I think I'll do it with a really fine flock. Yep. Just green. So they'll be fully flocked, I think. Because um, that means that I think the flocking will be easy enough to do. Much easier than trying to do filler texture painting <laughs> just like no thank you yeah so, it's it's like this figuring out the, the technique to get you the, the amount of text you want without yes, having exactly. to do stupid amounts of post work yes uh, exactly 100% I said goodbye to a pot of agrax last night oh tipped yeah. it over or nope. finished it? finished it ah, i'm like that uh with mine actually i'm i have one dedicated for bases because you know shit can come off bases when you're doing agrax. oh yeah you end up with a mud pile at the bottom of them yep yeah, so i have one dedicated for that and one just for miniatures and they're both they have less than a centimeter left in them yeah I was I was dabbing the brush round in the corners in the the bottom of it just to get enough out of it to finish For off it. those bases. That's yeah, so you used hundred percent of it. So very happy. It's good stuff. It's amongst the best stuff that Citadel do. It's yeah. That's the that's my go-to for mm -hmm. just general shadows. Yep. You know just does the bloody job so yep. easily yep it's too heavy for 15 mil miniatures i think which is why i'm still using the mixed army painters just because you you can dilute those to the point where you you want them if you dilute the citadel shades you end up with this white frosting I don't know if you've ever come across that. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. That issue, yeah. Yeah. So, the the army painter stuff dilutes better. But as a quick go-to for bases and stuff like that, Agrax every time. If not Agrax, then the Seraphim Sepia, you know, depending on which colours you want. I find the Seraphim Sepia to be just too subtle. It's just too watery from them yeah it depends on which color you put it over yeah like 
I'm using the, the CPU to go over these and have a look at oh, they might be oh no actually that's that's a good representation of it you see that the subtlety in shade yeah because there was a mix of smooth and rough and so it's a, it actually gives a really nice surface if you ask me yeah whereas yep. these are done with agrax and you can see because they're they're those two washes are over roughly the same color base oh yeah you can see the difference and you see you? there's quite a bit of difference yeah. yeah this is not helped by the fact that i've got um gravel on here and the uh, so you get a lot darker where the gravel is yeah, yeah. So obviously i've put a big puddle there which is why that's ended up super dark but um so i'm, I'm actually that base there those these are homemade tufts on there cool. but this stuff is um so these are gale force nine um desert basing oh, nice. so it's a desert basing kit so yeah you get there's this there's really nice colors and textures in the flock so it's That's not a cool. uniform flock it's a look at the static in that that's cool um it's not a uniform flock so you get um some interesting variation on the base between uh, uh, the finer grain and the stuff that sits up so yeah that's cool i i do mix my own and i try and mix different size yep and color yeah yep 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 but i don't have a huge variety no, well, I, I picked these up. These were cheap because they were in um, damaged boxes. So yeah, right. there was cool. a bizarre book bazaar with chucking them out for, I think they were half price-ish. Yep. And um, I went, yeah, yeah, right, I'll have one of those. And so I've based all human army with that stuff. And, and I really like how it's turned out. That's cool. Yeah. Just check it out. Sure d desert basing colours aren't going to go astray for me. <laughs> no, I wouldn't have thought so. Um, Considering I have what five, six, six, maybe seven armies. Mm-hmm. It'll be in desert desert base. Yeah. Yeah, that stuff never goes astray. All right. All right. I think we've hit the hour. We have. We're past. We're over. Cool, man. Yeah, right. I'll turn up an hour earlier, maybe next time. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's all good. It's all good. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Cool, man. Have a good one. Yeah, talk to you soon. See ya.